Thank you, everybody, for joining our discussion today on three reasons to upgrade from Forefront UAG 2010. Um, as most of you are aware, UAG 2010 has undergone some changes in its roadmap and its life, and Solicits Networks is pleased to discuss and present you know, so what are the viable alternatives and how can Solicits help you upgrade from your current UAG 2010 deployment. So for an agenda today, we'll talk a little about who we are, who Celestics is, and why um, you should be interested in our solutions. We'll recap what Forefront UAG 2010 provided for our customers and for enterprises. We'll talk about why to upgrade to our Celestics Edge E series. And our Celestics Edge E series is what we're considering our replacement or upgrade to Forefront UAG. And in there, we'll talk about three main scenarios or three reasons why, um, specifically focused around direct access, application publishing, and federation scenarios. Lastly, we'll end up with some question and answer time, so you can pose some questions to us. And then we'll talk about some summaries and next steps you can take to learn more about our solution. Again, at any time, just want to say, please, um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the questions or in the chat window. And as we see them, we'll respond. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So from an introduction perspective and about myself, my name is Benjamin Durr. I'm the Senior Sales Engineer for Celestics Networks. My responsibility is to cover all pre-sales activity and sales activity from a technical standpoint for our sales organization and for North America. Um, so from a technical question, proof of concept standpoint, I would be your point of contact and reference. Um, I'm an MCSC, Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator, and Microsoft Certified IT Professional. And I've been in the industry for about 20 years, focused on a lot of different disciplines in my time. Um, infrastructure, information security, manageability of our systems, and as well as remote access. So from our company profile in Celestics, um, we've been in business since 1999, which a lot of people don't really know. Um, we started off really being as an OEM manufacturer for companies such as RSA, Checkpoint, SonicWall, you name it. And from there, we branched out into more Microsoft-centric solutions. Um, some of you may have purchased our WSA appliances or MSA based on UAG and CMG software, or our RAS or our Radius appliances. From there, we've evolved to really de determining and saying, how can we simplify remote access, application publishing? How do we remove the barriers of deployment and really just make it simpler to deploy and simpler to operate and really make your job simpler? Uh, we're a worldwide company based in Fremont in, in Northern California, uh, but with offices in UK, Singapore, China, and Japan. Currently today, we have over 5,000 customers under active maintenance, uh, all the way from the large enterprises, all the way down to 20 user organizations, um, and everywhere from uh, military, federal government, state and local governments, to private enterprises. Uh, from a global alliance perspective, um, we are Microsoft's largest security OEM provider, as well as being a partner to most of the uh, big bars you've seen out there, CDW, SHI, and where we may work with, um, we definitely work in an overly channel friendly. So with that, I'd like to talk a little bit about Forefront UAG and just kind of recap from our perspective what our customers are using UAG for and what I've seen in my experience. Uh, Forefront UAG capabilities really fall into three discrete buckets in my mind. Um, first and foremost, uh, direct access and remote access, which we want to talk about. Um, it simplifies the deployment. Um, some of you may be aware that Direct access is part of Windows Server. Um, it was built in Windows Server 2008, um, but it was not deployment friendly. Um, there were a lot of technical challenges. Uh, for example, it did not have IPv6 to IPv4 translation. It only worked if you were straight IPv6 inside your own data center. Um, there was some activity reporting around it that UAG brought, and again, UAG from the IPv6 uh, included that as well. Um, UAG brought activity reporting, so you could say who's connecting, you know, who's authenticating, things like that as well as from a network remote access perspective, or VPN, it also included SSL tunneling, um, or network connector that you may be familiar with, uh, which worked well for Windows XP and Windows machines, but not so much really for other platforms as well. The second area around Forefront UAG is around application publishing. Um, this is probably by far more uh, prevalent than direct access remote access, and what we saw a lot of our customers do. Um, and it was very flexible and very powerful in how it did application publishing. Um, so it published, obviously, native web applications, things such as um, Exchange Services, SharePoint, Link, Dynamics, et cetera. 
uh, but also capability to do things such as BDI, remote apps, and other even SIG applications through a web tunnel. One of the more powerful features that a lot of customers liked was the ability to do endpoint inspection or be able to basically interrogate the device, be it either Mac, Linux, um, or obviously Windows, and say, you know, what is the profile of this device? You know, are there any Windows Security Center alerts? Is there firewall up? Is there antivirus up to date? Is it domain joint machine? Um, and you could extend that to include things such as, hey, does it have a special certificate I provisioned to this machine? And then marry that data up to the user information to create your authorization rules. So is a user allowed to access this application? Um, should they have full access, limited access, or no access, depending upon the profile? Um, the last feature around the application publishing was really around the mobile device interrogation. It had some built-in detection logic to determine what sort of device is this, and what are the form factors, and how do I render appropriately? So it had the capability to do I got, uh, more of a mobile-friendly portal, or just got more of a dumb uh, portal, where it actually would render the, render the display to the form factor you're on and make that a more elegant experience rather than displaying a full web page. The last scenario around UAG was around federation. Um, we saw this a little bit with some customers, um, and it's obviously become more prevalent in our software as a service world, our cloud-based applications, and even from a partner-to-partner -partner perspective. Um, UAG had the capability to function as an ADFS proxy, so it could do two really things. It could act as a relying party or consume claims from a partner organization where you would not need to provision those users and manage those partner identities in your own Active Directory, or act as a claims provider and be able to create a claim on behalf of a partner or a partner application. So I had those kind of three different roles within UAG, uh, direct access or remote access for your network connectivity, application publishing for your web apps, and then federation for the claim portion. Uh, the federation obviously tied more into the application publishing scenarios where you may have had a uh, marriage and say, we want to expose SharePoint to our partners, but we don't want to maybe necessarily match those identities, and so we'll marry Federation and the application publishing together. So now I'd like to talk and kind of contrast a little bit about our E-Series, our Celestix Edge E-Series solution, and how we've evolved how application publishing works. Um, some of you may be aware, obviously, and we'll talk a little bit later in the presentation discussion about some of the timelines and the reasons why, uh, but I want to kind of just tell you exactly what we are providing and how we can upgrade. So from our roles and features in our Celestix Edge E-Series line, um, we are really put into kind of three discrete buckets, just like UAG had, um, although a little bit different. Um, the first is really around what we call unified remote access, and it's the ability to provide an enhanced direct access experience like you had with UAG, as well as your traditional client-based VPN, be it your IPsec VPN, your IKE V2, or um, SSTP, your secure socket tunneling protocol for your Windows clients. So direct access, um, obviously from a, if you read on it, uh, research on that at all, or did any discovery, it's really an always-on VPN type of solution, or network access solution. And the client-based VPN, we look at that for your alternate clients, your down-level clients, your legacy or unmanaged systems. The second functional area of our Celestix Edge E-Series is around the web application proxy. So now this to what we saw with UAG and the ability to publish applications, we can do something very similar now with this new uh, functionality. Um, so we can securely publish your web apps. Um, it also functions, just like UAG did, as an ADFS proxy. So it has the ability to issue those claims if you so desire. Um, just to kind of point of reference, this question comes up quite a bit, do we need to do any sort of ADFS interaction with our applications? Do we have to use claims in our apps? And the answer is no, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And we can use native Windows authentication. And the last component of the web application proxy is a new functionality that Microsoft included, what's called Workplace Join. And Workplace Join is the ability to mark or designate a device as trusted, um, and what we'll do is we'll craft a special certificate and provision to the device, as well as create an object in your corporate Active Directory. And that data is then married and then looked up when the client attend, attempts to access, and you have the ability to say, should we allow this client to have access based upon is it a trusted device or not? Um, similar to what we saw with UAG and their endpoint inspection, um, obviously not as full featured. You know, we can't necessarily interrogate the health of the device, but it gives us a good standing point from the ability to say, should we trust this device or not?
the last area within our Selective Edge E series is around the cloud connectivity portion, or how do we uh, combine multiple environments or infrastructures we may have, and how do we have one central point for creating that connectivity? And here, typically what we're talking about is really site-to-site -site VPN gateway functionality, or how do I create a IKE or, v or GRE tunnel to my Azure instance, my Amazon instance, my corporate data center, or even partners or branch offices. And our Selective Edge E-Series, we designed it to be flexible enough that you can marry different scenarios into one appliance or one solution there. So let's talk a little bit about where our Selective Edge and our UHG collide, or what is the overlap and why should we upgrade? Um, as we mentioned a little bit, um, and kind of diving a little bit deeper into our E-Series, our Selective Edge E-Series, um, the first scenario is really, really around the web application publishing. Again, most of our customers that we've seen use UAG obviously use it for um, application publishing. Um, they have web application publishing in our so the Edge series and Server 2012 R2 is really built around AD Federation. Um, as we look out strategically at the landscape and say, you know, where is the industry going? Where is IT going? You know, how are users going to consume services? And how is we as IT professionals should authenticate our users? The answer is becoming more and more around federation, and you know, we're becoming more in. Uh, they're becoming more disconnected applications in the sense that the applications live outside of our control, and they're not connected to our Active Directory or our Denny management system. So federation is the glue that binds all this together. Um, our web application publishing supports federation and Windows authentication. So we talk about Windows authentication. We're talking about Kerberos authentication or NTL and V2. So within our web application publishing, we have a couple of different scenarios or ways we can authenticate users to applications. Um, federation obviously being the first one, um, Kerberos authentication, where users would have their typical form-based login or perhaps even just an integrated login if they're inside your network perimeter. Or we can do pass-through authentication and say, you know, simply let the application authenticate the user. Maybe they have their own identity store and it's not merged with Active Directory. We can do that too as well, so we can meet all those different scenarios that you may have for your application. And then again, we talked a little about workplace join for authorization. So how do we authorize systems to access the application? You know, how do we make sure that A, the users are coming from a trusted device or a known device, and B, that the users are who they say they are? Um, we can use things like uh, obviously two-factor authentication to meet some of those challenges. But also from a device standpoint, this is a nice elegant way to um, bring that information in into that experience for us. The second component is a really around our Edge E-Series solution. Oh, sorry, the unified remote access portion here. Um, we see a lot of customers coming to us about this scenario, specifically because we're in a software as a service world. For us, we want a better way to bring users in into our network, even though they may be remote. We want them to have the same experience inside the, outside the office as they would inside the office. Um, so really from our standpoint, you know, it's a supported platform for remote access, it's enhanced reporting, so we, um, obviously Microsoft has done a lot of work in how do we update the direct access platform, VPN capabilities, how do we get more analytics out of the system, and how do we know what users are doing. We are a wizard-driven setup, and as well as with you know, by remote access, we now have multi-site and geo-redundancy. We didn't have that necessarily with um, direct, or UHG and direct access. I'm in Windows 7. We want to seven clients were tied to one site. With Windows 8 and our selected edge, we can now do multi-site and geo failover capabilities. So really, kind of now we talked about the features, you know, why upgrade? You know, what is kind of our value or what does it mean for you as particular customers? Um, web application proxy, again, really uh, some uh, summarizing our components here. Web application access, pure and simple. We're still going to have on-premise applications we need to provide to our users and our partners. We still need to provide that access and secure method. Um, we want to build on ADFS just from a pure looking forward standpoint, strategic uh, looking out into our federated world. And we support modern authentication methods, be they, um, again, federation, maybe your mobile apps, your companies develop mobile applications, and you want to use something like OWAP v2 to support those applications. We can provide all that. For unified remote access, again, we're talking about direct access and VPN. We want to enhance that experience. You know, with our own solution, we have capabilities that aren't included in the native platform, such as session management functionality. Uh, one of the 
components that comes to us or feature requests that we get quite a bit is, hey, how can I terminate users? Maybe we uh, have terminated an employee, they're still connected to laptops, still connected to direct access or VPN. How do we you know, discount that session? We have that capability internally. We have consolidated reporting. So if you have a farm or remote access cluster, we can now do reporting off of one single pane of glass. So you can track where users are connecting from, what their sessions are, when they're authenticating, and where they're connecting to as well as we talked about the client VPN capability. Lastly, from a support standpoint, and this is very critical, um, one of the things I didn't mention is, obviously as everybody's well aware, UAG has NS support, as well as Windows Server 2008 R2. That was a supported operating system for UAG 2010. Um, it has NS uh, mainstream support this past year. So while we have customers still supporting and, and operating these, it is a security consideration that we should be concerned about and things that we want to be able to obviously resolve. I'm looking for the future. Obviously, we're built on the latest platform, so you're supported for another five, six years. From our own internal support, uh, we will support the functionality you need. So from a, hey, this is a break fix scenario, or I have questions, hey, you know, where things aren't working quite right, I have this particular user, we, as long as you're under current maintenance support contract, obviously, will support you for those scenarios. Rather than you trying to determine, you know, the, and resolve on yourselves, we're definitely, you can be your support arm for that. We'll support your deployment methods and infrastructure. And so what that means from us is that not only do we support our appliance hardware, we also offer our solutions in a software form factor as well, um, which we'll talk about at the end here. So we'll just support it, whether it's our appliance hardware or you deploy your your own hardware or your own virtual environment farm. And we also provide planning implementation support services through our professional services organization. So if you have a large architecture or even if you have um, want to upgrade to our solution, maybe you already deployed this in-house and you want to take advantage of our own IP um, and offerings there, we can help you with those upgrade processes. From a high-level matrix, it's a little bit of a busy slide, um, but I wanted to contrast where Forefront UAG 2010 had some capabilities and where our Celestia's Edge capabilities lie to and what is the overlap there. Um, obviously, you both provide client-based VPN support. Forefront UAG 2010 did through its SSL network connectivity, and it was a little more limited. We provide that as well, too, but through the native Microsoft routing and remote access functionality, so your traditional VPN dialer capability. Um, one of the areas that... Um, so the edge is not supported necessarily is around HTTP website publishing, uh, but it is HTTPS website. Um, in this day and age, uh, we do recommend that all website traffic be HTTPS secured regardless, and the world is just moving that way anyway. Um, they both supported federation scenarios in mobile applications. Um, they both support forms-based authentication and Kerberos delegation. Um, we support OTP authentication and uh, for two-factor authentication for one-time passwords. Um, we support site-to-site -site VPN, whereas UAG 2010 did not. Uh, one of the other significant differences is that we do not require any client access license. Forefront UAG, um, you may, may remember there was a client access license portion or a universal connector where you would pay and you just have unlimited clients. Um, we, there are no client licenses required with our edge tier. We provide all our licensing in our appliance form factor. We do support Windows Server Core, so that's a requirement in your environment. Um, we can definitely support that, and as well as support for trusted device access and redundancy and high availability. So at this point, I would like to open up for any questions you may have. So feel free to position your question into the questions pane, and we will uh, answer them as we, as we can. So one of the questions we get asked quite a bit um, really revolves around support for our WSA and MSA platforms. And one of the questions is, you know, what is Celestic's standpoint on support? You know, how can we have support through Celestic as well? And the answer is, we are still supporting our UAG-based appliances called WSA through 2023, and we are in the Microsoft Extended Support contract. 
Um, so if you need to have support for you in your undercurrent maintenance, uh, we can definitely support you for those environments. Um, if you have your own implementation of UAG or even PMG, we do provide software-based support options too as well. So we can support you for your own environments. There. So even if you deploy in your own virtual environment or on your own hardware, we will still support those. Obviously, we will not support the virtual environments or your own hardware, but we can definitely support you from a break-fix standpoint. So from a next steps perspective, or you know, how do we learn more, or what, how can we engage less because more talk about our upgrade paths, um, definitely we are here to talk about um, deep dive for specific topical areas, whether it's migrating from UAG direct access to 2012 R2 direct access in RS Western Edge, um, application publishing scenarios. We're definitely here to help you understand those topics more and help you plan those migrations. We do have a no cost evaluation program, either for our appliance or our software version. And we to provide free, uh, no charge, proof of concept assistance. So if you do decide to go through an evaluation, we do provide support for your proof of concept. So with that, I want to say thank you for joining our discussion today on upgrading UAG to our Selectix Edge E series. Um, I hope you learn quite a bit and see how we can help support you in your migration here. Um, I did want to make you aware of our promotional pricing. Um, we are having a promotional pricing campaign undergoing right now um, if you do decide to evaluate and purchase our Selectix Edge. Um, to schedule your free evaluation, please contact us at sales at selectix.com or visit us on our website at www.selectix.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.